we are going to talk about things to consider when getting a dog. This can relate to choosing the right breed for you, but also within the breed to selecting the right specimen, buck or adult dog. So to start with the beginning, the first thing to notice is, is the dog healthy? Some breeds are plagued by many diseases. Some dogs are not able to function on their own because they're only are bred by cesarean section or had to be uh, artificially inseminated. Those breeds would not be on my list as a functional dog. Breeding problems, uh, brains that are too big for the skull, eyes popping out, very delicate type of dogs. I would not have any of that. The second point would be how able is the dog uh, to carry itself. For example, here you see how he walks. So his um, front paw, left paw is almost uh, touching his right back paw, back leg. And the, the same with his uh, right front leg and the left back leg. That's the type of walk you want to see. Seamless. He's now pulling a little bit more, so it's not that uh, clean. But uh, some breeds don't even have the back line to do this properly, or they just walk without this ease and the strength. I don't like that. Another factor, look at the speed they can deliver. Of course, a heavy dog would have more trouble uh, getting to a, a certain speed, but it gives you a lot of insight. If they can carry a good speed, this is good. Also, if you look at the in the puppy letter, there's one dog uh, not keeping up with the rest. It's often not a good, a good sign. Another thing I really like is uh, I like to look at the feet. I want Mikey big. Big, strong feet that look a little bit like that of a cat. That's what I like. It gives you a, a better traction, of course, but also less chance of injury when they are in a conflict or are they digging or running around in the shifting directions. There's more surface to, uh, yeah, to transfer the forces on. Another thing that I really like is uh, a good strong head and neck. Also, as you can see, here, spiky. This is a good shaped uh, head. Good strong neck as well. That helps a lot. Another point, but as a personal opinion, is I like a dog of a certain uh, size. So. 10 to 50 kilogram would be my ideal. Starting from 7 to 8 kilogram, they could be good enough. And why do I want a size that if something occurs, some kid falls on them, uh, they get stuck, or they get uh, hurt by another dog, that they don't immediately uh, fall to pieces. So there is a size that I like, that you have a starting weight of 10 kilogram. Uh, in my ideal situation, it gives you a lot of uh, additional possibilities. Another thing that uh, I would recommend to look into is the longevity of uh, the breed. So sometimes dogs only uh, get to a certain age and then they die. And that could be a very early age, like uh, six, seven years or nine years and that uh, could be a trauma for both you if you like the dog and you you made a bond and I, I imagine you will sir but also your family so this is also related to the first point as I told you the health but some um, dog breeds especially the big dog breeds don't live as long 
and then you have uh, dog breeds that are plagued by diseases and all the other stuff. It will be often a costly affair, but also a traumatic one. Please keep it into consideration. If you want a working dog, another point is uh, how long does it take for the dog to mature so that you can use it and apply it for work and the time uh, that the, the total lifespan is or the functional lifespan even better because for example the last few years the working abilities often drop so for example if a dog with a giant dog has an average lifespan of uh, nine years but uh, from age six to seven it doesn't uh, contribute in a functional way and it takes two and a half years to mature to start working it for example take uh, to age six and a half for it to be able to carry out some work and starting at two, age two and a half then you only have four years of functionality in that nine years so less than 50 percent for four years out of nine it's less, less than uh, 40 percent Whereas, for example, if you have this little little guy, which matures within the one year of age and has a lifespan of, let's, uh, let's say, 16 years, of which uh, till age 14 could be applied for work, then you have 13 years of functionality in that breed. 13 out of 16, that's a good ratio, you can imagine. There's more than 75% of functionality. That's also a factor I like, like to take into consideration. Back to the the pups, you want uh, them to have spiky, sufficient nose length, but still a strong skull. It also depends on the breed. If you have a running dog, of course the nose will be a little bit different. A longer nose often has the benefit of allowing even more air in and also they're increasing the reach, so this could be good if they are chasing, for example, a hare. The stronger nose, like this little guy has, as better do has, uh, gives you more power and less uh, ability to be worked hard and they can come closer. So for some holds, it's nice that they don't have uh, a too long a nose, so that they can come close and really uh, protect themselves in that way because it's hard to, uh, to reach a head that is already uh, fully locked on to you. So this is uh, also depending on what you want. Uh, another thing I would really recommend is uh, look really hard what you want. Uh, the reliability for breed towards family members for example and also reliability on the stress conditions is something that I really look into. So for example a dog that uh, wants to take the alpha role and want to uh, rule over you and especially your children because they are uh, lower in the bracket would not work for me. If I could choose, eh? I'm not saying that I could not make it work but I'd rather have a dog that is uh, seeing things differently. It's alright to rough house of course but don't get into serious alpha things with your uh, family. The other thing is uh, reliability on the stress. If you have a dog that if it's uh, uh, faced by stress it just backs down or withers, it's not something that I really appreciate. Of course uh, there are horses for courses and running dog with an easier wither, but I don't like that. And I would rather have a running dog that's a little bit less fast, for example bull urchin. But that standard ground and one that uh, just floats away with uh, every stress upon it. I don't like that. So it could be different for you if you want the faster dogs. Please go ahead and take the one that uh, does wither. But for me, this is important. Another factor is how well does it fit into your lifestyle. For example, we live in a rural area, and then it's nice that you have a dog that doesn't bark excessively. Regardless of that, even if I lived on a farm, I would rather have a dog that only barks when something is really amiss than for every sound that it hurts, that it hurts, hears. Pardon me for that. Every sound that it hears. But uh, that could be your personal opinion. Someone to have a 
be the alert for everything and then they can decide. I can totally uh, relate to that, what I think and practice. If you cry wolf too many times, you get ignored and also your dog will. And if your dog gets ignored, you only have the nuisance of a dog that's always uh, barking for everything instead of the benefit. Whereas you have a dog that is in general very quiet, but if something is amiss, will alert you, that's a good thing. Because then you know you have to check it out, even if you don't find it. Initially you will, you will investigate further and then you will find it. And you will compliment the dog for doing the things instead of getting angry at the dog that's overly barking. That's my personal opinion, but I want to show it with you. Another thing that I like is uh, good musculature. You can see an example here on uh, this little guy. Good hind legs, good strength. Also a nice tuck in after the rib cage. And uh, a working uh, drive. Eh? We haven't uh, touched upon this, but if you have a dog that's eager to work, it's hard to isolate. The dog is going to have to promote getting into any activity. I'd rather have a dog that's really driven than a dog that doesn't uh, want to work at all. Another point that I personally like is uh, a dog that's easy in the maintenance. So, for example, a smooth coat that uh, is easy uh, to be kept clean. Of course, I like a wolf like uh, a Pyrrhus. Once I started as uh, being a breed enthusiast of both the game dog and uh, the sled dog type of primitive dog. But the, the latter also has, for example, if it has uh, its uh, number twos and he has, has diarrhea or is, is, is ill, it will get into the coat. Whereas in this type of dog it won't. If it goes into the mud, it will get into the coat. In this type of dog will almost, without any care, fall off. If you just keep walking for another two or three miles in the sun. And that's such a nice thing. But it all depends on what you want. Of course, if you have a better coat, you get better uh, protection against the cold. If you have a, a rougher coat, it protects you more. If you go into this bushes you see here, especially if there's brambles in there. So it depends. Huh? I'm not uh, dissing the other coats. I just give you an example of an easy easy lifestyle that I also like. An added benefit for me is with such a coat as this, you also see it shine very nicely. I like that, but also it's nice visual appearance because you see the musculature uh, beneath it, which is of aesthetic appeal. A factor uh, also to be mentioned when we are discussing coats, some coats they fall out uh, with large amounts. I don't know if you like it, I don't. I also like a coat that is very tight so it just pushes out the dirt like this one is like a little bit of a coat of a mole. I don't know if you've ever witnessed a coat of a mole but it's almost satin like. It pushes out uh, the sand. That's the thing why moles are almost always that clean. Eh? I really like that. Also his coat has a very limited undercoat, very limited, only see it in the, in the winter periods and still very little. I like that. So a dog that doesn't shed excessively is a big plus. Another thing regarding the coat is uh, skin. I prefer a dog with a good strong skin. Spiky. Spiky. See? Nice, strong. Yeah, so you get a thick skin, it's also very flexible. I didn't pull it to, to its limit, of course I won't. But I did a video that, uh, that demonstrates this uh, quite well. You can look into this. A dog for me should be friendly with children especially. And uh, I don't need a dog that uh, is an attack dog. I want a dog that if Nina tries to help, of course. And a dog that tries to alert, I really like that. But uh, for me, I don't need a personal protection type of dog. But it could be a, a whole different ball game for you. Eh? Please take into consideration all the things that you want and have a nice day. Bye bye.